Knitting a sweater can truly feel like the Everest of knitting, the pinnacle, the ultimate. And it is one of the most amazing feelings to knit a sweater, try it on, and voila, it fits perfectly. And all those people that ask you, oh, where did you get that gorgeous sweater? You can say, oh, I made it. However, there are seven easy to make mistakes that could potentially turn your joyous knitting into a complete disaster. Is that what I was saying? Yep, okay. So before we jump in, I did want to let you know we do have a brand new pattern for you this week called Giselle by Debbie. That's what I'm wearing. You can grab it at expressionfiberarts.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for email updates so you get weekly free knit and crochet patterns. So the first mistake to avoid is assuming that your gauge won't change as you knit your sweater. I know I've said this before and I'm going to say it again with an addition. Make sure you get gauge. You cannot assume that you can use the same needle size that the designer recommends because they might knit tighter than you or more loosely. So make a little gauge swap. Watch, make sure it's big enough that you can wash it and block it and see how it's going to react before you make the full item. I will add to that your gauge may change as you knit your project. So make sure that you continue to check your gauge as you're knitting to ensure that it's staying the same. Even a slight variation can result in your sweater being massively too big or way too small. The second mistake you want to avoid is choosing the wrong yarn. Yarn can have a whole lot of characteristics. It can be drapey, it can be lofty, fluffy, round, loose, mm, I can't remember all those words, tightly spun, loosely spun, bouncy, boingy, flat, round, and so much more. If you do substitute a different yarn than the designer, you be sure to do a large enough gauge swatch so you can wash it, block it, tug on it, just like you would wear it, and make sure it is going to behave in the way that you anticipated for the finished item. I know I have made a great many sweaters and shawls that just kept oozing and oozing larger and larger because I didn't understand this concept. And the third thing you want to avoid is underestimating the time it's going to take to make your sweater. Sweater knitting takes time. Yes, you could plow through and make a sweater in a few days if you don't eat, sleep, or think, but that's not the point of knitting. Knitting should be savored and enjoyed just like a delicious hot cup of tea. So take your time and don't rush the process. The time's gonna pass anyway, so enjoy each stitch and pour all of your love into this project. If you have never made a sweater and you're wondering how long it actually takes to knit one, the time is going to vary greatly depending on your speed, the complexity of the pattern, as well as the yarn and needle size. On average, I found it takes me about 20 to 30 hours to knit a sweater, just for a basic design, but allow more time for more complex techniques. And if you have knitted a bunch of sweaters, go ahead and comment and let us know how long it normally takes you to make one. The fourth thing I recommend avoiding is not trying the sweater on as you go. Not every sweater design allows for this, but I love and really recommend top-down seamless sweaters so you can try it on as you go. This is pure genius because when you get finished, you're gonna know that it does indeed fit. And our new pattern for you this week, Giselle, is a top-down seamless sweater. It features this stunning lace yoke and a soothing stockinette body. And this pattern comes in two versions, one with a lovely bell sleeve and a beautiful scalloped hem, and then this one with the gorgeous little ribbed sleeve and hem. Both are made in our hand-dyed crema sock yarn, which has a beautiful sheen, drape, and structure for holding up well while looking luxurious. And of course, the pattern and the yarn are available at expressionfiberarts.com. The fifth mistake you wanna avoid is assuming that the pattern is gonna look the same on you as on the model. We're all shaped differently. I remember one time knitting this beautiful circular sweater. It looked amazing on the model and it just didn't suit me well. So I have learned for me over the years that I prefer crop sweaters or long cardigans, but we are all different. So get clear on the styles that you love by trying on a bunch of sweaters before you pick out a knitting pattern. And I think you will be much happier with the end result. The sixth mistake you could potentially make is not understanding garment ease. This one can be tricky, but let's clear it up. Positive ease just means that the sweater is bigger than your body. No ease means that the sweater is the same dimensions as your body. And negative ease means that the sweater is actually smaller than your body and it has to stretch to fit. When selecting your sweater size, just keep ease in mind. Do you want a little bit of wiggle room, which is positive ease, no wiggle room, or the sweater to stretch a little bit to fit you. So you choose what you like. And the seventh mistake you want to avoid is not taking care of your finished project. You've just spent weeks or even months knitting this stunning masterpiece and it is only right that you take proper care of it. You should gently wash and block your sweater, which just means pinning it into shape and allowing it to air dry. And we do get asked a lot, do I need to block my sweater every time I wash it? Ideally, yes. However, I will say, if the design allows, you can just wash it and lay it out to dry. Also, you want to make sure and fold and stack your sweaters nice and neatly. You don't want to hang them so you get those weird little shoulder pooks and your sweater gets all stretched out. Having lavender or cedar sachets in your drawers or closet will help to keep your sweaters fresh and lovely too. And finally, be sure that you actually reach for that beautiful sweater and wear it. You spent all that time making it, you should definitely wear it proudly. And once you've made a few sweaters, it just might become an obsession and you're going to end up making 50,000 of them. Alrighty, my beautiful friend, thank you for being here with me today. I hope that this was helpful. Definitely let us know your favorite sweater knitting tips. You just might inspire somebody today. And I will see you next week with another new pattern and even more helpful tips and tricks.